So before we go any farther, I want to make sure we can get React Native set up with React Hooks. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. And to start off with, we're going to be using the React Native CLI. Now usually when I start a React Native project, I'll usually opt for Expo, just because the development experience is a lot better and you can start up the emulator and build the application a lot faster. But as of today, or currently, they do not support React Hooks, at least I don't believe they do. So we're just going to be using the React Native CLI for this. So to do so, we are going to first install it, and we're going to install it globally uh, by running this command, npm i-g. And I already have it installed globally, so I'm just going to interrupt it. Next thing we're going to do is run the CLI to create a project in React Native. So we're building the project in TypeScript, so we're going to follow this guide right here. Um, and we're just going to run this command right here. And I've already done this, initialized a My Awesome project. And that's what I have open VS Code right here. Uh, so after that, the first thing I want to do is if we look at our package.json, uh, you'll notice that they have two dependencies, React and React Native. So we want to set up hooks in this project. So we're going to need the latest version of React, um, or at least React uh, 16.8. And then for React Native, we're going to need version 59 to work. So we're going to install both of those. So we're going to say npm i and install React at version 16.8.2 and React Native at 0.59. And this is currently a release candidate, so that's why there's this dash RC at. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. Um, and then, uh, especially with React Native, uh, you might have saw, or I mentioned in the last video, that uh, with React Native Web, it's only compatible with 0.55. And we're currently using, we just installed 5.9 to use in this particular project. So this is what I'm going to attempt, and we'll see how well it works is I'm going to be using 5.9 in the React Native project, this one, and then our web project, we're gonna be sharing the same components, um, but we'll see if we can get it working. Um, the components, even though we're not, we're gonna try not to rely on any React Native 5.9 features that would break the React Native web project, but we'll see how that goes. Um, anyway, so we got this uh, installed. So we can go to the app.tsx. So this is what's currently being rendered. Um, if we were to start the app right now, I'm gonna just delete the app.js because we do not need it. If you click on it, you'll notice it has the flow version if you wanna use flow, but we're gonna be using TypeScript. All right, so we're just gonna write out a simple hook to make sure this works. So I'm gonna say down here, just export default app and then I'm gonna convert this into a function. So I'm gonna say const app, and then this is going to just return, and then I'm gonna just copy the view. And then we're going to just say const use state, and we're just gonna create a little counter to make sure it works. So here I'm going to say count and set count. And then here I'm going to display the current oops current value of count, and then below that we're going to render a React Native button. We're going to say increment, and then whenever you press this, we're just going to say set count is equal to count plus one. And we're going to give that a save. We don't really need the props here. And now if we go to our package.json, we want to run this project, so we can start the uh, CLI or uh, the packager by running yarn start or uh, npm start. The next thing that we have to do is actually start the emulator itself. So I'm gonna be running the iOS emulator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say iOS here and I'm gonna say react native run iOS. Now for those of you that are on a Windows computer, uh, you're gonna need to use Android and you're gonna need to have uh, Android Studio installed and have an emulator created. And when you have both of those things, you can create an Android script here and you just say run Android. Uh, and uh, you wanna make sure, I believe your Android emulator needs to be running when you run uh, this command, but if for the iOS one, it'll automatically start it up for you. So we're gonna say npm run iOS. 
And uh, just a heads up, this will probably take a few minutes to actually build this on the emulator and get it all working. Um, and then we'll see our application and make sure it works. So mine finished building and I can see the app starting up here. Now, if you don't see it started up, what should happen is if you go to just the uh, screen with all the apps, there should be a new icon and it should say my awesome project or whatever you named your project. And you can just open that up to see it. So uh, if we go ahead and click this, we can see it's incrementing the state. So hooks are indeed working with React Native right now. So where we're gonna go from here is we now have our React Native project set up and we also have our React project set up. So the next thing is, is we're gonna set up a mono repo. So that way we can create basically that one code base that we're sharing with our React Native setup and with our React setup and basically that one module or package that we're gonna share between both of them and we'll set that up. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching.